Good morning. And grace and peace to you. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We welcome you to this Palm Sunday, our, our Sunday that begins what we know as Holy Week. Uh, we do have a busy week this, uh, this week uh, with a number of different services. Uh, I want to welcome everyone uh, to our worship service today. If you are a visitor, a special welcome to you. We do have our cards back in the pews, so if you'd like to sign in and be recognized, uh, we encourage you to do that as well. Uh, we are going to have, uh, we're starting today, we're into a modified uh, phase three, getting back into uh, opening up the church a little bit more. We're going to have more of the seats open in the front, kind of keep some of those separated in the back. Uh, we're also going to be having coffee today for anyone that would like to stay for coffee and juice. There's coffee and juice. And we are going to continue offering the same way. And you saw the candle lighters also will be starting as well. For other announcements today, wanted to uh, call your attention that we are having our Monday Thursday soup and bread sign up and we're still in need of a few items, uh, five soups and nine loaves of bread. Uh, as I said, we're beginning our coffee hour today and camp registration is underway. If you have kids that are interested in camp, there's instructions on those camps in the bulletin. And one announcement that did not make it and was notified uh, by Justin at uh, the Lantern, they're going to have a prayer service for our youth uh, tonight at the Lantern at 7 o'clock. And uh, that's in relation to the, the youth uh, that we lost this week. So uh, youth, if you'd like to come to that, just keep that in mind. And we are having, like as I said earlier, two services. The Monday, Thursday, we're doing the soup and bread. We're also having communion. Uh, by intention, but we also will have prepackaged communion as well. Good Friday service, we're doing something instead of the Passion Play, we're not doing that, we're having the seven last words of Christ. We're beginning that at noon, it'll go to about 2.30, and we have seven different uh, pastors or lay people that are going to be participating in that, so a very ecumenical service. You can come and go, you don't have to stay for the whole thing. The uh, next week uh, morning, we have our sunrise service uh, at 6.30. The youth will be leading that, so pay attention to that. There's also a free offering uh, breakfast following that. And then at 10, 10 a.m., we have our Easter sunrise service. If you remember, last year we were with COVID. We, we didn't have our early sunrise, and that's when I did the outdoor service in the snow and the, the wind. <laughs> Uh, which was, uh, was unique, and uh, we're just thankful we can be back inside again. We do have a couple of sympathy prayer concerns. Uh, want to continue to pray for Kurt and Rochelle Van Tilburg and their families uh, for the loss of Rochelle's brother, Chad uh, Harms. Uh, that funeral service was this week, and the, the flower basket on top of the organ is from that service. We also want to pray just for our community as it mourns the loss of the 17-year-old boy, Dimitri Lechband, and we want special prayers for the family and uh, for our youth. And then uh, also have a couple updates on prayer concerns. Uh, Esther Ernst did have some surgery to put a stent in last uh, Saturday, not yesterday, but a week before. Uh, she did return home and everything was successful. Paul Ryder had a spot that was on his pancreas that came back negative, so he only has to worry about the one on his lung, so we're praying that they can figure out the best solution to, to either remove it or treat it. And then Ron Husingay is also, he will have a, a biopsy on a spot on his bladder this week, and we're praying for good results for him. Those are the announcements that I have. Any other joys or concerns? If not, we will do our normal greeting of waving to our neighbor, and uh, we will begin with our opening song. Let us stand.
walk with Jesus to see the depths of his love. We behold the gift of his forgiveness and to gaze upon the heights of his grace. To marvel at the magnitude of his mercy. We walk with Jesus as he rides his donkey. He begins in Bethphage and makes his way to Jerusalem. He does it for us and for our salvation. Let us pray. Holy and sovereign God, we praise you for your son, Jesus, who rode in triumph into the holy city of Jerusalem, hailed as king and Messiah by adoring crowds. May we, who continue to proclaim Christ as Messiah, Redeemer, Lord and King, be courageous and faithful to follow him in the way of suffering and the cross, lest we be numbered among the fickle crowd who turn their backs on your son. Turn our hearts again this day to enter into Christ's passion and death, so we may also enter into his resurrection and glory. Amen. Our opening hymn of praise is Hosanna, Loud Hosanna, which is number 174, and the words are on the screen. and prayer of confession. Merciful and mighty Father, you know us well. We are quick to speak of faith, but slow to live it out. We shout to Hosanna as Jesus approaches, as did the people of Jerusalem. But we do not want to be too close to us, or if he gets too close, you might see who we really are. Jesus might see our greed and our grasping. Son's name we pray. Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. And, and Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ 
is in a new creation. The old life is gone. The new life has begun. Friends, believe in the good news. For in the name of Jesus Christ, we are truly forgiven. Amen. Today's offering will be collected for the Mission Fund and the Property Needs Fund. And as noted in the bulletin, we're a little bit behind on the Property Needs Fund, so we would appreciate uh, considering that. We'll continue to do in this phase three to collect our offering using the drop box outside the church office door, as well as uh, the PayPal button on our, on our website and an automatic withdrawal. Our scripture for today is from Luke 12, 33-34, from the message, which says, Be generous, give to the poor, and get yourselves a bank that can't go bankrupt, a bank that, that is in heaven far from the bank robbers, safe from embezzlers, a bank you can count on. It's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is, is the place that you will most want to be and end up being. That's from Luke 12, 33 through 34 from the message. Let us pray. Oh Lord, our God, as we come before you this morning, let us, um, as we bring these gifts this week, let us shout the hosannas as we lay them before you. Let us be givers that resist uh, the temptations to live in, in self-righteousness or in self-protection, thinking we can do it all, all on ourselves. And let us be part of your holy parade, for apart from you, we are nothing. Amen. At this time, we will have uh, some special music, and they're not singing The Man of Sorrows. Uh, I think it was Blessed Be the Name. Is that the name of the song? Yep. Okay. When the 
darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. this time, I'd invite the children to come forward for this morning's children's message, and uh, Carrie wanted you, the kids to bring your palm branch with you uh, as you come forward. So uh, if you have your palm branch, bring your palm branch with you when you come up. If you don't have one, that's okay too. Those are really big palm branches, some of them, aren't they? I don't know if I've ever seen them quite that big before. Hi. Good morning. Oh, come on. We can do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. All right. That's better. That's better. Okay. So you guys all have palm branches, right? Or you all did, right? Those of you who were in Sunday school. You didn't have one? Okay. We could probably get you one if you need one. Okay, what happened when they, the kids came into church today? What was that? You were waving the palm branches. Do you guys know why you were doing that? Hmm. Do we know why? Did they tell you why? You know what today is called? Palm Sunday. And wh why do we wave palms? Do you guys know? Well, it's not the day that Jesus died on the cross, but it's the day that Jesus went into Jerusalem the week before he died. So this is kind of the start of what we call our Holy Week, where we remember what Jesus did for us. And so Jesus came into the city of Jerusalem, and he rode on a donkey. Donkeys can kind of be kind of stubborn animals, can't they? Yeah. So... You know, when you think about Jesus, and we know a lot about Jesus, don't we? But the people then maybe didn't know so much about Jesus, but they were so excited that he was coming because prophecies told of a king coming. And so he came into the city, and they kind of had like a parade for him. When you guys think of parades, do you guys maybe wave flags sometimes? Nice cars, right, fancy cars, like, Pontiac. right, Pontiac, something like that. You are right. And would it be shined up? Right. You're just a little rusty? Okay, it's okay. Okay, so if you were going to put your car in a parade, you'd, you'd shine it all up, right? And, and wax it, get it all clean, and, and then... Um, you would paint it, maybe? Okay. So you might get it all shined up. Okay. Okay. So he's, he knows what kind of car he's going to put in the parade, and that's good. And when we think about parades... Okay, now we're going to talk about a little bit something else, okay? 
Okay. All right. So when we think about a parade, sometimes we have someone who we honor in the parade, like it might be um, the mayor of the town or maybe um, someone from the state who represents us comes and they're kind of like um, the honorary um, member or the person in our, in our parade. So then we put them in that fancy car, right? Yeah, we want everybody to see them. We want it to look sharp. Everybody gets excited. They might have flags and they wave the flags. What else do some parades have? Now they have flags on the car windows sometimes. Is there bands sometimes? <gasps> bands, I love it when there's bands. Do you too? Oh, it gets you all excited and the music is so good and the kids are all marching together. And it's really fun, isn't it? Well, when you guys waved your palms, it's kind of like when we wave our flags. Except for they were excited because Jesus was coming to their city. And they didn't know much about Jesus, but they knew that he was going to be a savior. They didn't really understand maybe exactly at the time what was happening. But they lined the streets and they waved their palms. And some people put down their coats. So they took their coats off and they laid it on the ground so Jesus and the donkey could go across the, the way where it was clean, kind of as a way to respect him. But he didn't come in on a big fancy um, stallion or a big fancy car, did he? He just came in humble. Why do we think Jesus just came in on a donkey? They're kind of like a horse. But they're just not super fancy. But I think Jesus did that because his real message wasn't about all the glitz and the glamour. It was about his true message, which was love. And when I was looking up the word, you guys walked in on the song, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. One of the Christian definitions of the word Hosanna means save us. So the people, when Jesus came into the city, were yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna because they wanted to be saved. They wanted a savior. Jesus can walk on water, yes he can. And Jesus can save us, right? So they were really excited to have Jesus in their city. Okay, 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 all right. He's got a future, I think, here. <laughs> okay. So Jesus came into the city on a donkey just because it's a simple thing. Because he didn't want anybody to look necessarily at what he was riding and get caught up in that. But he wanted everyone to focus on him and his message for them and that he was going to save the world. Not just them, but the whole world by what he was going to do that week. So today is a day we just kind of kick off our holy week. We remember what Jesus did for us. And that he just, his true message was just really about love and how much he loves all of us. Okay, can we have prayer? Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gift of your son. We thank you that he came to earth to walk in situations and, and know what we truly are going through too, Lord. And he knows our hurts, he knows our pains, and he knows when we holler out Hosanna that he has the power to save us. And Lord, we thank you so much that that he does save us and that this week especially we can really just pause and reflect and Lord help us to um, talk to our kids about Easter and, and what, it, what it really means and not just for this week but, but for their whole lives and that the real focus is on eternity and that we get that if we have him in our heart and, and he can live inside of us and then someday we, we can be with him forever and ever. Um, Lord, I thank you so much for these kids, their enthusiasm, and their, their love for you. Um, help it to just stay that way, Lord. Help it to let them keep their focus on you as, as not only we go through this week, but as we, we grow them in our church and, and we try to develop that, that, e that constant love for you and, and the guidance that you, you want to give them. Um, thank you again, Lord, for saving us from our sins and just letting us celebrate, especially this year in church, and the excitement that we have with Easter and the true message that it, that it gives us. In your holy name we pray. Amen.
Our, our Old Testament reading is from Zechariah 9, 9 through 10, found in your pew Bible on page 1480. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Let us stand for our hymn of preparation, all glory, laud, and honor, and the words will be on the screen. be seated. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and the actions of our lives be accepted, O oh Lord, as you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 185 years ago, a man by the name of James Bonham was a young lawyer from South Carolina and he had only been in Texas for three months when he went ahead and decided to go to a little fort called the Alamo and he was going to go to fight with them. It was a small fort near the Guadalupe uh, River in San Antonio and it all started on February 23, 1986, and it happened when Saint, uh, Santa Ana, General Santa Ana, came with his troops, 2,000, uh, were surrounding this little fort of the Alamo, and they only had 182 men. Now, it was then that James Bonham decided that he was going to break through the lines, and he did, and he was going to go get some help because in 80, 182 to 2,000 is not very good numbers. And so he went to Goliad, Texas, and to find help, and he asked, and no one would volunteer in Goliad. He went to the next city, Victoria, Texas, and no one in Victoria would help. So what did Bonham do? He went back to the Alamo. He went back knowing that he was going back to fight, back to the battle, going back knowing the fact that the odds were against them and that more than likely he was going to die. Well, we've been doing a sermon series from Matthew's Gospel called The Places of Passion. 
And today we begin our walk in Bethpage. You can see that on the top right-hand corner. It's on the top of the Mount of Olives. And it's there that Jesus comes down and goes into the city, into what is now known as the Golden Gate. And on Bethpage, uh, this is where Jesus begins his journey on the donkey. And he, too, is going back to the fight, back to the battle, going into the city, knowing he is going to die. Let us look at our reading from Matthew, Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11. And I'll ask you to stand for this as we stand to recognize the gospel reading. From Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11. This is known as the triumphant entry. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, it was then that Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. And all this took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet, the prophet Zechariah, which is, Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, on a foal of a donkey. And the disciples went and they did just as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, they placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. And a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from palm trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went ahead of him, they shouted, and, and that followed him said, Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and, and they asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus. He is the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Now one of the, the prettiest views from the Mount of Olives is a look on the city, and this is actually looking back on the Mount of Olives. But on one of my trips uh, to Jerusalem, was my first one, we were staying in a hotel that was on the opposite side of the Garden of Gethsemane. I got up early one morning about 5 o'clock. It was just barely light. I walked around the outside of the old city and walked all the way around. It was about a mile to go all the way around. I came to uh, about where you see that... Um, where the cars are in the bottom left corner, there's an area there where you can walk up a path. And I walked up that path uh, about three quarters of the way up and I put an arrow, a red arrow in the top right. And there's a wall there and that's where I stopped in the morning. On my left was the Jewish graveyard, a large graveyard with graves uh, that are actually tombs sitting on top of the ground. To my right was the place where they believed Jesus wept over the city. And that's where I did my devotions. Nobody was around. It was a, a, a really cool time. And I, and I thought about what that must have been like. <clears throat> what that must have been like for Jesus when he came down that hill and he first stopped and he saw the city and he wept over it. But then as he went out and he was on his donkey and he was going down... And the people came out and they started shouting their hosannas and crying out to him. And he's going into that city knowing, knowing that he is going to die. Knowing that there is a battle ahead. And yet the crowd cheered him on. And so he rode and so he went. And Jesus chose to enter that city in a humble manner. And he came in riding on a donkey. And, and again, this is not a steed or a war horse, but a humble donkey. Uh, it, it's a, an animal of peace. Uh, it's not a horse, and Jesus is implying that 
He's not coming into that city to take over, to bark orders, but he's coming into the city to really to be a servant, to wash people's feet. And Jesus doesn't come to dominate or intimidate people, but he's coming to, to love. And he's coming to forgive. And Matthew makes sure to point out that he's coming in on a donkey, which is to recognize Zechariah's prophecy that, that really prophesies about this uh, you know, hundreds of years before. Which says, See, your king comes to you humble and riding on a donkey. Now Matthew actually leaves out part of Zechariah's phrase which says, and the righteous and having salvation. That Jesus is righteous and having salvation. Which I think is to emphasize the point that Jesus is coming as a humble king. And it's a tribute to his humility that he isn't coming to command an army. But he's coming to eventually to stretch out his arms on a cross. And he is coming to save them. He is going to be their salvation. And though he was rich, Jesus was in heaven. He became a king. And uh, this king became poor for our sakes so that we might be rich. And rich in a way beyond our um, uh, wildest imagination. Because certainly a king that is coming like this is worth crying out about of shouting and shouting they did. And Hosanna, like uh, Carrie said, save us. This is uh, the son of David. And indeed it's a reference to the coming Messiah and that there's a king who's going to come and save them. Only it's not the salvation the crowd is actually looking for. Jesus is riding to his certain death. He's riding to, uh, to his death, but not before. He suffers a great deal, a gruesome beating. Jesus is riding back to the fight. He is riding to give his life as a ransom for many. And, and a ransom being a sum of money that you would pay to get somebody out of prison. Uh, much like a, a bond bailing uh, of getting someone out. Uh, Martin Luther says Jesus uh, ransomed us not with silver and gold, but the ransom that Jesus paid was with his precious blood and his innocence of suffering on our behalf and dying for us. Only the prisoners Jesus is releasing in this case are, are not in an actual jail. The prisoners Jesus is fighting for and dying for are prisoners well, back then, and the same is true of, of us today. We are prisoners of things like anxiety, emptiness, fear, sin, and, and selfishness. We're held captive by this sinful nature we have. And, and we're also held by the delusion that we think that, we think that somehow we can overcome all this by ourselves. On our own, and we, we have to understand it is only through the grace of Jesus Christ, the humble King, that we can truly be saved, that we can truly be saved by the sin and, and given us a true sense of what it means to truly be righteous. It's also interesting to say that there is nothing in Jesus' uh, Sunday parade, his Palm Sunday parade, that is really stately or, or mag uh, magnificent. The prophet Zechariah foretells this event and how it's going to happen, but it's, it's not attended. There's no city officials that greet him. There's no key to the city. Uh, even the high priests and, and, the, and the, the Pharisees, they're kind of in the shadows. They're not in the crowd that's greeting him. And it was a great multitude that followed him. You, you see the streets are just packed. And the people are not great magistrates, but they're common people. They are actually, more than likely, the outcasts, the overlooked, the left out, the unloved by the upper crust of society. And why do I say that? Because they were the ones that were shouting Hosanna, but they were also the ones that were probably camped outside of the city. You remember, this is the Passover. 
The city of Jerusalem has tripled in its numbers. There's not enough room for everybody to be in the city. So many of them had to be camped outside the city. Many of them would have been from a distance away. Who were those people? Well, they were, they were the Galileans. And the Galileans were the ones who were like, when Jesus did the feeding of the 5,000, that's 5,000 people, with four, five loaves of bread, two fish, he fed them all. And when he was done, there were 12 basketfuls left over. They would have been in the crowd. There probably was in that crowd some of those that Jesus had uh, had healed, whether they were lame or sick or blind or deaf, all from that region of Galilee. That was a major ministry of his in that region of Galilee. And then there were the multitudes that heard Jesus' Sermon on the Mount as he preached to them. Uh, that's several chapters long, one of the greatest uh, sermons that Jesus gave. There was also the the woman at the well, she was a Samaritan. And Jesus met her there that one day and, and she understood that he was the one who could give their, her living water. And when she finally realized who Jesus was and what he could do for her, what did she do? She went back to her village and told all of her Samaritans that I have found Jesus, the Savior of the world. So the crowd that's there that day are all from, most likely, from Galilee and they've all experienced Jesus firsthand and they came to honor and admire him and to show him because Jesus had showed them love he showed them forgiveness and, and, and acceptance even though by many they were the outcasts and they came because they had either win, witnessed the miracles uh, had it happened to them or seen it by others or heard the power that Jesus had as he overcame nature, he calmed the seas, or maybe it was just the recent miracle of, of raising Lazarus from the dead. But it's interesting in this text, not everyone knew who Jesus was, if you look at your text. As Jesus comes into the city, it's making all kinds of rackets and, and uh the, the people are shouting, and, and obviously it was creating quite a stir in the city, and the people that are in the city are, are, are wondering, who are they talking about? The, the scriptures say, who is, they actually ask, who is this? They don't know. And who is it that tells them who Jesus is? The crowd that's following him. Now I imagine that crowd that's following him, they're Galileans, and they're saying, He's Jesus. He's one of us. He's from Nazareth and, and Galilee. That's who he is. He's Jesus. Well, the irony in their greeting Jesus was they believed him, again, to be their Savior. Only Jesus wasn't going to save them in the traditional way they had come to understand. Jesus was not going to get rid of the Romans, uh, drive them out of the city. That, that's what they hoped. But Jesus was going to free them of Roman, uh, free them in a way that they were not expecting. And it was a freedom from their sinful life, from the stronghold that Satan had held over them. And it was all because he was willing to ride into that city, into the battle, knowing he was going to die, and that he was willing to suffer on our behalf so that we could be saved and set free from our sinful past. So as we remember Jesus riding into this humble city, we're like the people of Jesus' day. Those on the outside, those on the inside. We too have a choice. We have a choice. It's, it's decision time as to how we're going to receive Jesus Christ. It's either one way or the other. There, there's no in-between here in our text from Luke 11, verse 23 from the New Living Translation actually tells it pretty plainly. Jesus says these words, Anyone who isn't with me is opposing me. Anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. 
You see, we're either in that crowd that is cheering and, and crying and hollering out, Save us, Jesus, Hosanna to the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Or we're in that fickle crowd. That crowd in Jerusalem who doesn't really know who Jesus is because they haven't had a personal relationship with him. And they haven't really turned their lives fully over to Jesus. You see, so if we do not receive him fully, we are like those who just want to give lip service to Jesus because it's the right thing to do. Or we might even go so far as to say, we want nothing to do with Jesus. In fact, we want nothing to do with Jesus. We want nothing to do with God. We don't want God mentioned anywhere. And I am here to tell you that this book that we have known as the Holy Bible, God's Holy Word to us, we may see a day when this is taken off the shelf. Why do I say that? Well, if Dr. Seuss, books can be removed because they are supposedly racist by the, the wanton culture, our culture that wants to uh, get rid of everything, what's called our cancel culture. If they can do that to Dr. Seuss, they can do that to this. And so we have to know where are we going to stand. Because like the great king of David, what we probably should be doing is crying out like we're supposed to do during this whole time of Lent. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. And then I will teach the transgressions thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. By faith in him, the humble king can elevate us to become the children of God. And by, by praising and honoring him, we receive blessings that, that only Christ can give us. And truly, Jesus is a radical prophet. He rides into that city as a radical savior. He shook up the city that he rode into. And either Jesus is who he said he is, or as C.S. Lewis said, He's a lunatic then if he's not who he said he was. He's on the same level of a man who said he's a post egg or he would be the devil himself. You see, we have a choice. And, and hopefully we're not, like, uh, we're not like the donkey. You know the donkey that Jesus rode into on Jerusalem? He just had a great day on that Palm Sunday. <laughs> he said that was the best day of his life. He woke up that next day thinking, God, I wonder what it'll be like today. And so he gets up and he goes out to the city and he, and he says, throw down your coats. Throw down your coats. Come on, I'm coming. <laughs> Nobody throws their coats down. Miserable heathens, he said. So he goes, and he, he goes into the marketplace. Surely they'll recognize him there. And, and he said, throw down your palm branches. I'm coming. Throw them down. <laughs> Nobody threw down the palm branches. <laughs> he's sad. He's dejected. He goes home and he tells his father what happened. And his father says to him, You crazy donkey. You're nothing without Jesus. You're nothing. And our Heavenly Father says to us, You crazy donkeys. You're nothing without Jesus. I'm nothing without Jesus. You're nothing without Jesus. Because Jesus is the one who came to save us. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the one that is the Son of David. He has come and He is the Savior of the world. And I'd like you to uh, repeat after me and say it like you mean it. I'll say the word you repeat, okay? Or words. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the best thing, the best thing that, has that has happened to me, to me 
Amen. Amen. All right. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the king. You are the king of Zechariah's vision. And on this Palm Sunday, we remember to worship and honor and bless you as the king of kings. And we know that no other king would show up to conquer his enemies humbly riding on a donkey, but that's just how you entered the city that day. No other king would bring the power of death and rob the grave by the brokenness of the cross. And that is why no other king could defeat evil and tyranny by shedding his blood. And that's why we're here to say there has never been a king like you, nor will there ever be. For no other king would not would come not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And the many being a, a group of, of rebels and sinners just like us. No other king would come so humbly, so lovely, so kindly. And that is why we too can say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. For Lord Jesus, you are our King of kings. You are the glory, a king of glory, and you are the Lord of lords. You are the monarch of mercy. You are our governor of grace. You are our prince of peace. And great is our rejoicing, for you have come to us, righteous and victorious, loving and sovereign. And by the riches of your grace, you continue to free us from our sin, from our selfishness and our worthless idols. And by the power of the gospel, enable us to live with hope as agents of redemption until the day that you will return and make all things new. And wherever sin abounds, may your grace abound more. And we pray now for those on our prayer chain of concerns. We, we pray for those who are on the front lines in the health care. We give thanks for the medications and the shots that are being able to be given to the people uh, to allow them to get back to some normality in their lives. We, uh, we pray for Carly Honkop as she recovers from her surgery to repair a hole in her eardrum and for Esther Ernst who had her surgery last weekend and we pray that any infection is, that is left will be cured. We pray for Paul Ryder as he deals with a spot on his lung and gives thanks that there is no other spots that are cancerous and determines what course of action to take. We also pray for Carly Doden who is on bed rest and that she can carry her baby uh, as long as everyone can stay healthy. We pray for Ron Husingay. We'll have a biopsy this week, and we, we pray for good results for him and for Violet Byers as she continues to uh, do her, her new chemo and that, uh, Lord, that uh, hopefully the soreness uh, in her hip will, will um, not be as bad as it has. We also pray for those who have lost loved ones. We think of the family of of Chad Harms, uh, Rochelle Van Turbourg's brother, and uh, we ask that you would be with that family in this time of loss, and especially as we come to uh, a holiday such as Easter where we gather as a family. We also pray for the family of uh, the 17-year-old boy, Dimitri, uh, who passed this last week, and we pray for um, not only for the family, but for our youth who, uh, who all had to to hear this on Thursday, uh, that's quite shocking news. We also pray for peace and comfort to all who have lost loved ones. We also pray for uh, Lois uh, Stoffert family and for the loss of her uncle. And for anyone else who is going through or coming to this Holy Week and holiday of Easter, uh, having uh, one who is not at the table, a loved one with them. We do pray for our, uh, uh, these United States. We pray for all our political leaders uh, for any decisions they will make this week, uh, understanding that it sounds like the Senate will be voting on the Equality Act bill, and we pray that, that they will not support that. And Lord, we just pray that uh, all of our leaders in, in, in Washington will make choices that protect our biblical values and morals uh, that this country was founded upon. And may we trust, O oh God, and have enough faith to wait patiently on, on your timetable and to be confident knowing that, uh, Lord, in the end, uh, we know that you win. 
And that no matter what happens, we know that, uh, Lord, you are there with us. And so we pray with, with confidence that prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn then is Jesus is all the world to me. And we're going to be singing verses 1, uh, 3, and 4. Hear now the blessing of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine graciously upon you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, both now and forevermore. Amen.